All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Noragami, Noragami Season, season one, 1, Episode 3. We were introduced to Yukine. Our newest member of the cast. Mm -hmm. um, he is a regalia. That's or he right. Will be where he has now become a regalia because yes. of the contract slash agreement with Yato. bond that was forged mm -hmm. uh, between him and Yato. Yeah. Um, it is something where Yato, through the way they showed us, without really telling us, I kind of mm -hmm. like the way they did that, there was more to just the words that he spoke in the beginning of this kind of relationship mm -hmm. that they formed. Right. And Yato saw things, he experienced right. things mm -hmm. that were unique to this kind of a dynamic slash relationship. Yeah, unique to Yukine. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, yeah, and maybe we'll get more into those in depth as the show goes on. But for now, we've gotten enough to know sort of the situation. Yeah. It wasn't a good one. That's mm -hmm. why he died as a teenager. Right. Right. Yep. But now we have a trio, and as you all know, trios in fantasy are the 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 way to go for mm -hmm. having, at the very least, a a more uh, unique, uh, yeah. diverse uh, set of interactions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we're probably do maybe potentially even like a one or, or a two fourth. more characters. Oh. I, I feel like if we're getting a regalia partner for Yato, mm -hmm. if Hayori or doesn't really have some kind of other uh -huh. kind of dynamic other than the one with Yato primarily because I'm guessing that it's going to be more of something where Yato will be the focal point sure of that these does kind of make sense he is the god after all yeah exactly mm -hmm. meaning I'd say we kind of want another one yeah at some point sure even if it's not a main main character but right uh, yeah y'all without further ado let's get into this all right, everyone, now be sure to go check out the reaction portion of the video in the description below, then come back here for the discussion. All right, so we got introduced to the God of Learning. We did. And yeah. we got introduced to the concept of what a regalia not only can do, can't do, but also the relationship between a regalia and, and the god. their god, yeah. mm -hmm. which is interesting because it is, I would say, more of a master-servant relationship sure. than it is one of equals. There mm -hmm. is a certain code of honor and respect that I believe seems to be uh, very much prevalent within the way that uh, I believe his name was Shenjin or Senjin. Uh, Senjin, uh, I believe. Yeah, uh, but he basically was like, uh, oh, yeah, you don't need to do that. And then his right, right. regalia, yeah, who was the... Impolite or not right to bow to a god that isn't yours. Right, that was what the other uh, mm -hmm. regalia uh, said to uh, to a Yukine. Right. Or also, mm -hmm. someone Tenjin. who can have... Yeah, Tenjin. Someone yeah. who can have a name that is different based on what form they're in. And I thought that was rather interesting. The idea that Yukine has his name from being a human. Right, Yuki. Well, mm -hmm. well, Yukine, that was his full name, but then also Yuki as well. That's the one that's actually emblazoned on his skin with okay. the regalia tattoo. Gotcha. So Yukine is a full human name. Yuki is his actual regalia name. And Setsu is his name as a sword. That was a thing that they brought up that was, gotcha. that was very, very, like, very interesting when uh, it felt like Yato was doing the full... Um, right. Um, Khaleesi, Mother of Dragons, you know. Well, all right, that. all the titles, but it was something where it felt like he knows the right way to do this. So he's like, what is this little one called? He goes, his name is Yuki. Um, as a regalia, I call him Setsu. Right. Okay. And as a person, Yukine. Yuki. Okay. Right. So there's, there's, there's a little bit of distinction there mm -hmm. that is rather interesting in that the the main theme of what they've set up with our kind of main ish character in Iki mm -hmm. Hayori is that she is both she is right. caught in both worlds here mm -hmm. so a regalia is also in some ways all and one by just the sure. fact that they can at the will of their god transform into multiple different uh, right. forms also maybe maybe more under their will actually than the god because that was how there ended up being a split between 
the previous regalia with Yato. Right. Is that that uh-huh. regalia can just be like, nah, screw you. Yeah. And I'm, that's, I'm just going to leave. Right. And that's probably why Sato, or not Sato, Yato, that's a different show, um, <laughs> told him to, you know, like, all right, come when I call you, you know, things like that. Right. Meaning that the relationship that Yato builds with Yukine is very important mm-hmm. because if he doesn't do it right, yeah, it could lead to problems down the mm-hmm. road. Yep. And... This is something that I feel like is the reason why Yato doesn't have a lot of specific things going for him as a god on the surface. Is he okay. doesn't seem to have a lot of allies. That's true. W- contrasted with Tenjin, who mm-hmm. literally like has like, too many. Has like, a troop. Yeah, he yeah. has a full on right <laughs> regalia, if you will, of regalia, and yep. and it's just oh yeah. Yeah, it's very much a a status thing that he right. has attained via methods and means that Yato doesn't seem to very much uh, uh-huh. do. And so, even though there are those parts of Tenjin where you look at him and you're like, okay, hmm, maybe maybe uh, you he's know, he's a little haughty, a, a bit haughty there. Yes, yes. You can also definitely see the sides of Yato where you're like mm-hmm. no I can see why you don't have anybody right right <laughs> exactly it's, so it's not too hard to figure out you do have your <laughs> redeeming qualities you know your, yeah. your heart of gold that's a bit down of, in there somewhere a bit of contradiction in his characterization as well that yes. might lead to some really interesting mm-hmm. I would say like uh, revelations maybe about who he was because sure. Yeah. In some ways, one of the things that has been brought up a bunch as a question is, "Are you even a god?" Right. And then in this episode, they brought it up of, "This is a real god." Well, mm-hmm. r- really, the only thing that we, as the audience and the, the main character in Hayori, basically has to know of what makes a god is kind of her own and our own perceptions of what a god would be like. Sure. But there's nothing that says that in this world, a god has to have checklist A, B, C, D. Mm-hmm. So Yato could very much just be a bum god yep. who's very much just struggling to try to make ends meet. And build his own little cult of, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. of people that follow him. Oh yeah, and it's like, okay, like right where yeah. where does where does that lead him? Where is that coming from with regards to him as a as as a person, even if he's sure. a god? Right? Why? Right? Why does he have these desires other than just the idea of okay, if he's a god, he wants to have a big old shrine and everything, right? Because why not, right? But yeah, but why specifically for him? And because mm. I feel like with each episode, we're getting on the one hand a lot of very specific characterization for the characters, right? Mm-hmm. For the cast. Yeah. And then at the same time, there's a whole lot that's being concealed, right? Yeah. It's being sort of hinted at, but you don't get the full picture, right? right? You know, yeah. things like Yukine's past, um, Sato here with the whole thing Yato. of- It's okay. It's okay. Dang it, it's I'm, okay. Uh, Yato here with the whole thing of him not wanting, him being fine with people wanting to kill themselves if they want to kill themselves because there's no hope for them at that point apparently but he doesn't want other people to see or specifically he doesn't want other regalia or maybe just people in general to see them kill themselves because of the effect it has on them see and, yeah you know what's the distinction there and, right i don't think we got the full picture i don't think we did I, I think, either i think what's important here to bring up is that we're going to be spending a lot of time with at the very least, Yato. Right. And then by extension, the two other characters that mm-hmm. have the unique connection to him. Yeah. Iki Haru, Hayori and you can, you know, her whole, you know, cotton both worlds dynamic. And then sure. Yukine by being both the regalia and in some ways the servant and the master servant relationship. Right. But they're both new to mm-hmm. this whole world. Yep. So in some ways, one of the things that I love in fantasies that deal with gods or immortals or any kind of beings that kind of go beyond death mm-hmm. is that there's a weird look or perspective that they have surrounding death that doesn't fit on first appearance it to, to right. in any uh-huh. way with a with a natural human's worldview. Yep. Because now I would say that there's 
there's something that they could be getting at here regarding the idea of what happens when someone dies is that it's not necessarily the end. Sure. And what Yato's getting at is that I know that people are dying every day. Every few minutes, people mm -hmm. are dying. He's like, I'm not omnipotent. I can't stop everyone from, from dying. Right. I can't save everyone. Mm -hmm. So this kind of dark look at it where he's saying, you know, it's not like they can even become regalia. Is he saying, if I save someone that already within their own soul has no will to live then i have then i haven't really saved then them. i haven't saved them right, i just right. delayed yeah. what's going to happen later right and that's a really cold way to look at it oh, because yeah. it assumes that there's no way that their they soul can be right, right. their soul yeah. that's cold could be warmed mm -hmm. by the acts of empathy from a spiritual yep. being like any right. one of the three of them but but what i think he is getting at is that the people that he very much wants to make sure that he saves are those that have the potential to do so much more in the afterlife mm -hmm. potentially but also something where those that are going to by their death have this really really lasting like you were saying negative mm -hmm. chain reaction or repercussion regarding how or where or who they're nearby when they they die yeah. which is which is I don't know if I agree with that. Like I, I am. Well, I, it it gives me some weird. Yeah. Like, ooh, that's yeah. All there, right, interesting. There are parts of it where I totally get where Yato is coming from, and then mm -hmm. there are parts of it where I'm saying, okay, maybe this is shining light on an area where he needs to grow. Because sure. because the standpoint sure. of hey, you know, bringing up the idea that suicide isn't just the ending of one's own life that right. it doesn't just stop there right it becomes this 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 plague this virus this thing that infects everyone that knew them right where where you know it it totally messes them up inside right okay uh, yeah because a lot of people i would say have the um uh, if we're to use this world's kind of uh -huh. analogies their soul is strong enough to be able to weather something of that magnitude but I know a lot of families and a lot of people who have been in situations where when the older the older brother commits suicide, it's something it's that while while it doesn't necessarily directly cause anyone else in the family to commit suicide, like like two of the younger siblings are scarred for life. Right. Like, like and then the likely like that they might, you know, Skyrocket. Well, right, right, right. Yeah. But I, I don't want to go into that. I want to get into the idea of what the, the mental effects are when that happens, because I've seen it be something where then that kid then needs like mm -hmm. trauma, PTSD, oh, yeah. like yeah. full on therapy for decades. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, like, like, that, yeah. like that's something where like. I, I think I need to rein back a little bit of what I'm saying. It's not like literal decades because I've only been alive for, you know, nearly three. But I've seen it where someone at the age of 13, you know, takes their life. And then at mm -hmm. like 25, the yeah. younger sibling is still all kinds of screwed up yep. inside yep. because of that happening. Right. And this is the thing is that. So many people are at so many different places within their own mental health to where they're not thinking about necessarily other people oh, in no. those instances yeah. instances there. And it's not that suicide is a inherently selfish thing. There's selfish aspects well, to it. I would it. say it is. Well, yeah, yeah, I, I would say that that's 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 a that's a way that you can look at it for sure. But that's not saying it's only that. And that right, it's the right. Mm -hmm. So, so in that instance here, Yato is trying to, trying to be in some ways, I would say a, a helpful aspect of humanity, and yet he has to live with the reality that uh, he can't, he can't actually do, he can't actually do everything for for those that right. already just want to mm -hmm. end this. It's that contradiction of having a, a being as powerful as Yato, and yet he is he still has his limits. And, right. And if yeah. you think about it... He's not a Shiro. <laughs> no, no. Thankfully. Yeah. And and the fact that um, 
the fact that he is a spiritual entity mm, does bring on a sure. different perspective like you were bringing up. I could totally see it being something where as a spiritual entity, it's very hard to give any worth to the physical existence of humans. Sure. Because that's just their 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 meat, you know, robot that they pilot, right? Sure. And their and what they really are is their their spirit spiritual entity that mm -hmm. will exist after their death, right? right? And and then it's the question of what kind of existence will it be, right? Yeah. So so if it's something that is that is you know, ends up becoming dark and twisted, then, you know, like yeah. the actual saving of their physical body, he doesn't see as being something that really affects that one way or the other, right? Because their soul is going to live on in the after, the, exactly. the beyond anyway. Right, you know, and that's something where oh. there can be some, there can be some real positives of that, of, you know, when it's the trying to help people, you know, uh, look beyond the 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 struggles and things that they had to experience in life. We saw that with how he took Yukine under his wing, right? Mm -hmm. But then there's also the idea of wait. So so does that mean that if someone were in the midst of that, you uh, you you wouldn't help them? You know. Well, that's the, that's what the contradiction was with when this instance happened. Here was when the Phantoms coerced this kid to nearly commit suicide. Mm -hmm. Um. He saved the kid, which I think is something that uh, we we might want to make the quick distinction in that what we said earlier, we didn't get the full picture here because this was mm -hmm. not a kid doing this of his own accord. Right. There was some anxiety and some stress that led to the Phantoms being attracted to him. Sure. But it was the Phantoms' will that overrode the kids Right. and led to this happening. Which makes it really interesting that Yato was saying that, oh, if they're possessed by a creature, that means they're already corrupted because... But that means that this wasn't possession. There's a difference between being coerced potentially like this and actual possession. Sure, but then that... Yes, yes. I, I, I'm, I'm totally up for that being the case. But if that's the case, then that makes his earlier statement mean a lot less. Because that of of if someone wants to die, then then you know then they should then just they die. Well, no, you he's know? saying that they're already possessed. He can't do anything about no, no, that. No, right, right, right. But but that uh, if that is if that is how that statement ends up being able to be applied to the world as a whole and the spirits and the possession and the not possession and the like, you know, being physically forced rather than being mentally infected or whatever, um, then that that kind of would feel like a a situation where Yato's statement regarding it is sort of like a, on the surface, a much harsher statement than it actually is. And instead of getting a cathar cathartic realization of, or or growth on, the, on behalf of Yato or things like that, it's just that it was a misinterpretation of what he was saying. Well, that you know, assumes that, it, that we get no more data other than this. That's why I was saying we well, don't have the full right. picture and that's, here. And that's why I'm kind of curious to see how these these sorts of character like um not not like journeys that are being set up necessarily but just like bits of bits and hints of characterization that yeah doesn't have that full circle completion within the episode how they'll be followed up on in future episodes not necessarily this exact topic but right. that general theme that's being addressed you yeah. know within the mm -hmm. character um, yeah i, I yeah. think i think what this gets at is people that are themselves the characters that we're all seeing here were all once human and that's something that i feel like needs to be maybe brought up as a theory potentially because we already know that two of them were once human yato right. we don't know his but origins there is a possibility but there's i would say an overwhelming possibility mm -hmm. yep the point of what the end of the episode seemed to be bringing up though was that the differentiation, though, is that regalia are people that didn't commit suicide. They wanted to live, and yet they died. Meaning right. that mm -hmm. that yearning for valuing the thing that Yato says he, he needs to see people that value life in some way in order for them to maybe be someone that he'll save. Mm -hmm. But if they seem to have no value in life, then that's, that's something he can't change. And maybe, maybe it's something where it's also uh, a little bit of a defeatist mentality where there's uh -huh. some problems with it. It's not that he's 
unwilling to save the one. It's that he doesn't want to get caught up being a Shiro and right. just burn out trying mm-hmm. to save the one sure. one at a time every well, day every time and then and, and then end up mm-hmm. in some ways maybe losing himself along and, the way and especially if by saving the physical body of the one which he might not even put too much store in and sure self because he called them souls anyway right right exactly yeah then if by doing that and even if let's say uh, the the souls aren't immutable, right? And, right. and the people can change and, yep. and things like that if he gives them that other chance. Because they, they definitely should be able to. Right, right. And that but, just But maybe right. maybe he's a bit jaded or maybe he doesn't look at it at, sure. quite in that way because, you know, he's it's lived that a long time. He's lived or, a long time. Yeah. It's that disconnect from being a spiritual being, not yeah. you know, really living the life of a human. And that's where Hayori's going to come in. And that's where Hayori can come yeah. in. Yeah. But it could also be something where then if he saves them and for some reason they don't. Right. Sure. They don't get better. They don't, you know, whatever. And they end up doing it again sometime later. And then he's not able to save them because he wasn't Mm. there for when it happened. Right. Yeah. And then as a result of that, it's something that a bunch of people witness it. You know, the the negative backlash collateral damage as a result of their actions ends up spreading to more people then did he actually end up doing more harm than good by saving them that previous time yeah because what i think it is i think what they're getting at here is how do you think phantoms come about sure like in, in some ways i i think what they've been hinting at here is that phantoms are just souls that passed away Mm -hmm. under negative circumstances their souls are already tainted with something you know more uh uh, destructive or inhuman or something so they end up when they you know go on to the spirit world their their soul they go Mm -hmm. to the 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 in between or the the far shore or what have you Mm -hmm. um they end up being uh corrupted into these forms here and then that's the plague part where they then go and seek Uh out the thing that reminds them of their or their original life so then they find anxiety or Mm -hmm. they find hatred or they find fear or what have you and one of the wonderful things that you can do with uh uh, not necessarily a story like this, but a, a setting like this, uh, you know, like, like having these fantastical elements yeah. is to give that literal manifestation to something maybe non-literal or harder to pin down with words right. that we experience in our daily lives, right? Yeah. The idea of, you know, if a loved one kills themselves and then that that completely, you know, traumatizes all the people around them, right? Is that, you know... Uh, when it's something that you actually have to deal with in a in a normal physical tangible you know salt of the earth kind of like like way with no fantastical powers no regalia right. that gets a lot more complicated when yeah. it's something where there's it's not some, easily solvable it's not all. easily solvable when it's something where it's manifested as some spirit or whatever and that's actually the thing that's causing it then that's something you can actually directly fight right right and which, on behalf of someone else yeah which which in some ways does kind of trivialize and simplify the real world issue a it, little bit because it's in some ways saying no we're not going to actually tackle the issue we're uh-huh. going to create in some ways a visual artistic representation of the thing so that when mm-hmm. we address it we can actually move the story along without leaving you with completely unsettling right it's safety which, gloves well like, it is safety gloves but i think that's where yato's little observation here kind of doesn't completely wear the safety gloves and that he's saying sure hey uh yeah i've been around a while mm-hmm. maybe he's not you know you know uh tension level where he's been right. around for centuries or something but he's maybe been around for a lot longer than you know 17 well, years old and uh-huh. he's uh he's he's seen some shit yeah and, and it's not it's not all something that he can really influence mm-hmm. in a positive way or save well and one of the so uh one of the things that I'd be really excited to see if they explored in this show mm-hmm. is the idea of Yato, even though he is the competent one, he is the god, he is the, you know, he is the teacher of these two that don't know about this world. Uh-huh. That he also has some things that he needs to learn, right? Oh, totally. Because, because the vibe that I got from him this episode is that he's very jaded, right? And in previous episodes, I feel like we've gotten hints of that, but it was always done for more comedic effect, right? You know, the, oh, come on, you're, you know, you're not working with me and all that stuff. 
and and it's great right it, yeah. you know you, we can have we can have lots of laughs with it but in this one it got a lot more serious oh, and yeah. it, i would love to see something where you know because maybe it maybe it's something where maybe he's not a young god maybe he's been around for a long time but you know he's mm-hmm. fallen by the wayside something happened whatever and and he has been in this constant state of just being nothing right and seeing all this stuff happen maybe doing what he can but you know given the fact that he doesn't have a shrine he probably hasn't been super successful in his efforts right because otherwise there would have been a lot more people that would have been say grateful you know or he's for getting what he hung did. up on things that most gods don't spend their time on sure yeah um one of the things that i feel like we need to address because we've kind of been just focused on this one part in the discussion mm-hmm. is regarding um Ikihayori's observations regarding regalia and them being people that wanted to live now we already know a little bit of yukine's backstory just based on the visual stuff that we got in the previous episode uh-huh. however the idea that she then sees at this point all of them being young looking innocent there's this aspect of them that they feel free there's because she saw okay. all the you know the the waifu harem of of, right. of tenjin here mm-hmm. but one of the things that i think she's getting at that's really good that i think connects to the stuff that we got in the previous bit is that remember when um yuki or yukine said i don't really remember anything before this and yet yato took a like a good portion of the last episode kind of reeling as he Uh went through experiencing some visual trip Mm -hmm. of life experiences from yukine means maybe what it is is that it's in death at the point when they get the opportunity to become regalia regardless of the negative stuff that happened before that just because they had the desire to live Mm -hmm. that gives the god enough maybe power or possibility to work with right to where they can then bear the burdens of a regalia and set them free sure where actually in some ways yato just by having the girl that ended up leaving him as a regalia was him being like hey yeah i might not have the greatest personality i'm not a great person Uh but i did this to set you free from your past so that you could be reborn as this new being and now you're yeah you're free you're not my slave you can leave me if you want like i (laughs) i'm not gonna like it if you do but right but i feel like that's where this kind of odd perspective could come into play is that the gods are actually doing this as their own weird way of helping the soul Uh the thing that they really care about like you were getting Uh at and giving it that form of reincarnated um second chance second kind of. chance i would say it's it's not really that second chance redemption in my mind it's more of like a it's more of like a how would i say this it's more of like literal transformation because they take okay. on a new name uh-huh they have no memories of the past gotcha meaning that they only really have traces in reality of their past selves and in in eternity in the infinite potential i'm guessing they don't have a lifespan they're going to be vastly different than who they were in life than you know you know in a decade or two or two or three all right so so yeah i i think that there's something there that uh that is based around the world building that we don't fully know yet and that's that's sure. part of the big picture that Yato right. hasn't given well, us yet. Well, we've seen some of like the the way that these your spirit entities do damage to other spirit entities is by corrupting them, right? That's what their touch does. It's not that right. they it's not that they bleed spirit blood, you know. Yeah. Right. It's it's that they start to get corrupted. So I'm guessing what happens is that, you know, in a similar way to, you know, people, right? Uh-huh. If you let yourself end up getting, you know, corrupted too much by the the pains of life the struggles of life and things like that you know like these people were here that ended up causing them to give up then eventually it can turn into something ugly and maybe that's where the phantoms come from and okay hence it's you know it it continues that representation of what's happening in the physical world with the spiritual aesthetic and rules and all that stuff gotcha that was another thing that they brought up that was kind of interesting though is the idea that 
the actions in the human world do have an effect in the spirit world. And that was something that we already knew based on the idea that phantoms were attracted to negative energy just in general. But, you know, maybe it's a lot more connected than than we know. Because in some ways okay. that fits with how much Ikihayori is this like, oh, ooh, yeah, yeah. You you're complicate not, things. Yeah, yeah, you're not supposed to be in our business here because... Mm, Okay. Yeah, you're you're not supposed to be both. You have to be one or the other. You know. Well, and it it uh, they did also reference the idea here. I, I believe this is this is what uh, was the point of Yato saving her from the train mm-hmm. is that her tail can also be cut by um, physical physical things. objects. Because I was right. thinking it was something where it could only like it was the if a if a bad spirit you know swiped her tail then right. that would makes be, sense. And the, like I, I, okay, okay, I get that right. That that seems to directly follow just based on the things that had been the set logic up before. Of the right. Yeah. Yeah. But the idea that a physical thing could harm her spiritual tail that's that's more into the realm of that she's kind of stuck between both and right mm-hmm. it's 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 bleeding through yeah not in some ever increasing way but in a way that is constant and if and if yato is in a situation where he's so focused on trying to be a god that he in some ways and and this might be uh taking it in a direction that it isn't because i have a i have a couple different ideas on how they could like they, they seem to be setting up Yacho's character. Yeah, they're they're still setting up though. Right, I, I see what you're going with. But this. like, yeah. like the 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 main two that I think of is that either Hayori is someone that is there to sort of remind Yato yep. of what that's it means one. to also be human, right? For sure. Because and that because that's something that he that he he needs because usually yeah. whenever the whole idea of God or a God or whatever is brought up in in pretty much anything, right. but especially in stories. The big thing you have to get over is how do you deal with the indifference, with the right. with the separation and the, you know, you're a, a being that exists on a higher level. So how do you still actually care about the goings on of all the creatures that yeah. aren't gods, right? Yeah, thankfully, and, in some ways, his own selfish desires for a shrine and well, gathering money uh, end up having him dealing with the mundane exactly. in a very empathetic kind of way. Yeah, maybe, that was, maybe just sympathetic, but, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, but that was the other that was the other like sort the other of angle. spin on it that yeah. I was wondering if if this show is gonna gonna take mm-hmm. moving forward because with Tenjin, he was very effective as a god, right? Mm-hmm. He has all the regalia, he's got all the people, you know, like sending the prayers to him and things like that. Yeah, but and Yato doesn't have that, right? But there were the things that Tenjin has that Yato wouldn't want to have, sure. right? And that Yato isn't very effective in a traditional sense as a god, but right. what if that's actually because he doesn't allow himself to be indifferent, right? He does care about the people with the individual problems and does all these things, you know, even mm-hmm. if it's for a sort of not worth it return, you know, mm-hmm. in, in a lot of cases, cleaning mold off of a, you know, a bathroom. Right. How big of a deal is that really? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And it'll be cool to find out because I think that these characters are set up by the drama in this episode mm-hmm. to have potentially a stronger bond that could eventually break in certain ways. But I would say, it's going to be made stronger over the course of this type of conflict. So, yeah, that's where we're at. Yep. We've got ourselves our uh, first other god that we've been introduced to mm-hmm. and thus seeing a little bit of how gods interact with each other. Yep. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, I love, I, I know I'm, I, I already love it. I'm going to continue loving it moving forward the shtick of you know yukine and yato's uh psychic link and right. things like that so yeah is that both ways mm-hmm. though i don't know if that's i don't both ways. i don't think it's both ways yeah um that might be also another reason as to why regalia end up leaving him specifically is because sure. he's not um very uh uh he doesn't steward that connection very well sure yeah or it could also be one of those things where maybe he cares so much about the the goings on of you know the individual that he sort of oh. tries to bear all their burdens without actually like you so know. he ends up being a micromanager and then people don't quit jobs they quit managers sure well yeah something yeah. like that or, or just the idea of that um 
if there isn't if the connection doesn't go both ways mm. there's you know it's, they wouldn't have they yeah. would have access to yato then. right right exactly gotcha. yeah yeah that's the possible too yeah all right well y'all thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion if you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now though go check out the link in the description below for our patreon you can get on early access there you can watch full length timer reactions there and all this comes with discord access you can chat with us in the community there about this show about anime in general and you can also talk with jacob about the sci-fi novel that he wrote that's right I wrote a sci-fi novel called battle lines it's on amazon the link is in description down below yeah, so if any of that interests you, we'll see it there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time. <laughs>